This week, we share with you the second and final part of Anne Dungo's story. She is the author of the book, The Fate That Killeth, which she wrote based on real-life experiences. In this episode, Anne decided to quit the denomination where she was raised up, but this sparks strong rejection from her dad. So I went out of, I called two of the elders who are my friend and people that I respect, and I told them, I'm done. I go and tell my daddy, I'm done with this faith and I don't want to be a member anymore. That now happened. And Henry, I thought it is the end of my suffering. I opened a chapter of rejection. Because my dad felt so bad, being a firstborn, the direction I've taken. I remember I would go home, and when I go home, my dad would not even come to sleep at home. He was spending the night at my mom's shop just because I'm home and uh, I've walked out of this denomination. So that thing affected me because now my daddy was, you know, firstborns, how they are with their dads. So he was my best friend. And here I am. I don't know now what, what to do, where to go. But just because I'm going to my mom would try to talk to him and tell him, no, she is a mature person now. She has an ID. She has decided the way to follow. Uh, during that period, I stayed within about a period of one year, having issues with my daddy uh, to a level that it's reached a point I don't even want to go home. Because if I go, my father won't feel that good of me. But mom kept on talking to him and telling him, no, <clears throat> you need to know that she has made a decision and she's a mature person. She has chosen another route and she's our child. So forgive her and accept her as one of your daughter. So my dad was able to accept me. He forgave me. He called me and he blessed me. And, uh, but it was not easy because I had gone through a period of some time with that. And that's now I knew definitely now I'm out of this church and I will never be in it again. Her dad later passed on and the cause of death was suspected food poisoning. He died without being taken to the hospital. He died Nyumbani Kwake. And uh, he left behind six of us, young, a very young family, because I was the only person who had done with the school. My sister, who is behind me, the one I told you was taking care of me, was doing her KCSC by then. So when was dad, our dad was dying on November 2010, um, my sister was doing her KCSC. And we had to push the barrio up to Friday, Saturday so that she can finish with her exams and we continue. So to me personally, I would say uh, this faith took away my dad because I have been in the hospital. I've seen things happening. I've heard of people even taking poison and they're being saved. So me, I felt like if someone was there would have taken my dad to the hospital, maybe my dad would have taken, would have been taken care of and hang away Zakukufa. But that's how I lost my dad in the name of faith that he cannot be taken to the hospital. So I would say when I was writing the faith that killed, it is something that I wanted to express that I personally has gone through because I suffered. To be very honest, I suffered all those episodes I've talked about. My normal childhood was taken away because I went through a lot of pain, a lot of challenges, and I had to adjust regardless of what I'm facing. Personally, I had to adjust that whatever it is that is happening to me, uh, maybe this is how life is there outside, even to the other people. But I came to realize it was because of the faith that I was in. I am not against anyone's faith. Actually, even in our constitution, we have freedom of worship. Uh, but it is always good 
to get to know what you're getting in self, yourself into. Because sometimes our parents push us to something that affects our life and affect our destinies. It is okay to take your child to church, but when you get mature, it's good to investigate what kind of faith have you been raised up and care to decide what you will follow. Because to me, my dad just left us like that. I suffered. I've seen people, I've lost friends in the name of that faith. Some got married, they, they couldn't even be able to push their kids, they died. I've gone through an experience of being a mom and going to the hospital and I wouldn't say were it not for the doctors, but I would say God used doctors to save my life. But I've seen a lot of my friends dying because someone is getting sick, cannot get a medical attention and that person die. Uh, it's good to differentiate even when you're reading the word of God. Let us not take it as if it was put as a must that people should not go to the hospital. The way we say that we have given people the freedom of worship, it's good to preach Christ. So when I was writing this book, The Faith That Kireth, when I was writing this book, all that is here talks about not only what I went through, but what is they are outside because we are lot we are having a lot of things being taught outside there in the name of faith, you know. And you hear them saying even some buy the handkerchief, buy the salt, go and do this and you'll get healed. I'm not fighting all this, but I think it is a higher time, as the servants of God, we preach pure gospel, who is Jesus Christ. Let us not teach. Uh, other things. Let us teach Jesus. Let us teach his word, his gospel of grace, his gospel of love. Not teaching our own things and not building, you know, a certain denominations based on few scripture. The word of God is deep and the Bible says that it is new each and every morning. Maybe I have written this, which is the faith that killeth. I know many more will come. Many servants of God would come outside there. I am not, and my intention when I'm writing or when I wrote this book, I didn't write it to fight any denomination. But it is to shed right to people so that we get to know. Not everything, when you hear someone saying praise Jesus, not everything that is praise Jesus, praise Jesus, is to be followed. It's good to investigate and know what is that that is being taught and make your own decision. Because we cannot get healed because of the handkerchief. Yes, they can be used as a point of contact. We cannot get healed because of the salt. And actually because the word of God says we are the salt of the world. So it is us who is the salt because we carry Jesus. So it is us who is the salt. It is not us going there carrying salt and telling people, sprinkle it, this will happen. Let us be people who are seeking Jesus on our own and have a cross communion, intimacy and relationship with our Lord. Let us not always follow what is being taught because there is a lot that is being taught. We are in the last days and a lot is happening. So I would call it and every person outside there who is born again, who is not born again. If you want to have a relationship with God, just have a moment of praying and reading the word of God. And the Holy Spirit, who is the truth and the right, will guide you to know, to differentiate between the good and the evil. But I myself, I can be wrong because I can come up with my own understanding and I teach you that and I tell you that is the right thing to do. But the same, if I tell you today you read a certain verse, the way I'll understand, it's not the way you'll understand because our grace is not the same. So it is good to have a time with God and with the Holy Spirit so that he guides you on the right direction to follow. You can participate if you want to join us. 
uh, call it uh, the, the, this book, The Faith at Kireth. You can maybe get in touch with me through our social media handles. You can get me through the Instagram is Nongo An, or through Facebook is Nongo Wangare, or you can write to us through uh, Gmail. I can give out my, my Gmail account. My email account is Dongo Wangare 158 at gmail.com. You can lie to me or you can inbox me either in, in the page of our Giving Hope to the Whole Press Movement. Support us, pray for us, let us share love, or you come to my inbox. I have a page there and I have my own social media handle that is called Andongo. And you will see me. When you see this face, I'm sure you'll be able to identify it's me. We can organize on how you can get my book. By God, grace, I would say that none of my siblings or my mom is there in that, in that church anymore. They are free worshipping. in uh, With my sisters, I go with them in Kingdom Seekers. And my mother now fellowship at KEG at Nyandarwa under Pastor Moshiri. And I thank God for that. So that is the part of the transformation that I would say took place. Personally in my own life and in our family's life. And we thank God for it. And it's inspired me again. So even to write the book about our history and about what we even went through as a family. And they are very okay, even very happy. And I have even their blessing when I'm sharing this testimony of how I transformed. To me since then, I've been serving. I've been serving in, the, in, uh, in Kingdom Seekers. And I thank God using me different areas in the ministry. I am a minister of gospel. I'm not a pastor, I'm not ordained pastor, but I'm a minister of the gospel. After now, the time that now I've been serving and all these, I met the love of my life. I'm married. Love where you are, hi. I don't want to mention more of, hi love. Uh, I don't want to mention more of uh, that story, but I love you where you are. Thank you for the support. And uh, I got married at 2019, actually just the other day. And by God's grace, uh, we were expecting a baby. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we were involved in a road accident. It was, on a, it was on a Wednesday, and we had a journey to travel to Remuru. Me and uh, my husband, and one of my colleagues at work. So I was going to do some duties of work, but because my, my husband was going to Remuru, we just chose now the only thing I can do is to, we, we just uh, pass by, we, can, we give him a rift and we drop him at Remuru. And then uh, I go and continue with the duties I was doing concerning the work. But on our way to Remuru, around a place called Karirana Tea Farm, around 10, I think around 10 in the morning, it's uh, when I was on phone call. And I just have had the driver saying, hey, these motorbike people. The next minute, the car was roaring. And um, that's how we got a terrible, because I got it a terrible accident. Luckily, the driver was able to, me, I was at the back seat, sitting down on the passenger seat. And along the way, I remember asking them along the way before we reached to the, the specific place where we got an accident. I remember asking them, who is telling me to unbutton the belt? And they said, I haven't told you anything of the sort. I asked him, hey dear, are you the one who have told me to unbutton the belt? And he said, no, not the one. But if you have had someone saying then, unbutton the belt. And honestly speaking, that's what I did. By God's grace, I want to thank God because I followed that instruction. Because we were expecting our firstborn. So I was almost seven months too. And uh, when 
the accident happened, it affected my whole right from the knee to the thigh to the hip joint. I got a multiple fracture. Completely my leg fractured and uh, it has twisted now on this side of the hip joint, my leg was twisted like this. So by the time they were coming to remove me from where I was, uh, it was so painful for me. But the only thing I was asking them, I was asking about my child, whether my baby is okay. And uh, someone came and saved us. There was a lot of people, but there's someone who, she, he's called Isaac the River. Just a good Samaritan. That man came and asked, what is wrong? What's going on here? And he was told there is an accident that has happened. And he said, have you people saved the life of the people who are there? And he was told, no, but there is a woman there who is injured and she's pregnant. He's the one who picked me up and took me with his car together with uh, my hubby and took us to the hospital. According to him, he said that he has been saving a lot of people's life. I didn't know this man, but you see now, when you're taken to the hospital, there's this rule, if it's a private hospital, unless you pay, before now the police comes and he asks the questions and all that. He always tells us that it was his first money from his first salary, the job that he has been waiting for years. And so he had left his house with a motive of going to get that money and pay his office rent. But he used that money to pay to unknown people. He spent about 20 something thousand for people that he don't know. He made sure that I was admitted in the hospital. All the scans that needed to be done was done. And I thank you and your family, Isaac, wherever, wherever you are watching us from. May the Lord bless you. May he increase you because indeed he saved my life. And he made sure that I've been admitted and been given now even the ward where I'll be staying. And he kept on coming. When I was taken to the hospital, I was in a lot of pain. The scan was done. Luckily, the baby was alive. Still, there was some heartbeats. But the main issue was now me. When the x-ray was done, it's when they realized now I have the, that multiple fracture. And so they said that uh, what will need to be done is an immediate operation. So I was scheduled for the next, now the operation on the 14th of November 2019. So I went on theater that 14th from around 3 a.m., 3, no, 9 a.m. in the morning up to the time I was waking up, it was about 4.30. Uh, and now they, they did now the surgery. Wakanieka chuma. So on my right thigh, imewekwa chuma. Na I would want to say I didn't expect that I would walk again. But I woke up, found myself lying on the bed of the hospital there after the surgery. I stayed at HDU for some, about one week and three days. So immediately the day I left the HDU, it was on a Saturday. It is when I felt that my baby is not moving well. And I told the doctor that I can't hear the, you know, the baby kicking. And so the doctor said, uh, maybe it's because of that issue of the surgery medication is not, st it's not yet over in your body. So it could be the reason, or maybe the child is sleeping. I said, then it's okay. So the next other morning, which was now on Sunday morning, I told him the same thing. And he said, Anna, we will take, let's give it up to 2 p.m. So around that 2 p.m. is when my sisters and some friends came to visit. And they, they came to see me and uh, somehow I didn't know the milk was drinking out. But to me, I thought maybe it was sweat and all that. So one of my sister asked me, and why, are, why, why, why is your brow sweat? Told her, I think maybe it's sweat. But when they left, I became curious and I had to check what's going on. So it's when I saw now the milk is drinking out and I just turned on my bed, Nika, Finya Kengele, 
and the nurse came and I told him na toa maziwa it's when she went and came with the doctor and I was immediately taken remember now this time I can't move because niko na chuma and it is so fresh na bebo na kitanda so for me si hata siezi tembea hata siezi simama because nimegongwa not only mgu nimegongwa kifua ile same two kifua na nimegongwa bavu and I'm, si I'm still having a lot of pain na hii mgu sasa ya right imefura sana but I want to thank God because walinichukua na wakaenda wakafanya scan and they realized that the baby is no more that thing affected me a lot. Uh, it indeed affected me that we lost our firstborn at that time. And <clears throat> uh, the main issue was now on how that child will come out. Because I'm on oxygen, I can't breathe well because of the chest. And again, I can't sit down. Because they were using these beds, zile za hospitali za kupandisha juu na simamisho na yo. Tasa hiyo ndo walikuwa nakuja wanabendisha juu na weza kukula takula. Nilikuwa nalala to hapo throat. This leg was, there was instruction that it's not twisted. I don't move at any given. Ata kuenda haja kubwa ilikuwa shida. But the... Immediately when the baby was confirmed that the child is no more, it's when the doctor said now my condition has gone to something else. I was at Nazareth Hospital and I want to thank them too. They really do took care of me. Thank you, Dr. James and the team. And uh, honestly speaking, he said that the case now is has upgraded to another level and they can't handle me because they suspect I might be having blood clot. And that was the main reason I was scheduled immediately for a surgery when I did accident. So they said unless they transfer me to another hospital. So I was taken to Kenyatta Hospital and the CT scan was done. And indeed I had blood clots on my chest and on my leg, the one that now had been done operation. And the other leg, my left leg, there is some part that nilikuwa nimegongwa, so there was some blood clot. So the doctor said they cannot operate now on me unless now I be injected to push. The person who is being told to push, I'm not even breathing well. I'm on oxygen. I stayed there with my dead child in the stomach. My child died on Saturday when I told them I can't hear my, the kicks of my baby. So I stayed now being on Saturday, Sunday. I've been transferred with ambulance on a Monday. And the CT scan has been done. The result is out. On Tuesday, they are saying the operation cannot be done. So this Tuesday, it is now the fourth day. And the child is still on my stomach. Uh, my stomach started now feeling, I started feeling uncomfortable. Ikafura, you wouldn't have realized with my body that I'm expecting. But ilifula sasa na jumgu hai move, ikakuwa ni kama kamurima kameka hivi. I would try to look nione pale kwa migu lakini siyezi. And I started feeling the smell is coming from my stomach now. Kwa mdomo ni kiongea na sikia sasa, the smell is coming out. The doctors would come, look at me. I think... There is one who came and told me, Anne, are you born again? And I told him, yes. I can be, you just need a lot of prayers and have faith in God. Every time they would come, you know the way doctors go droughts and they read your file. And I remember one of them, alisomewa file yangu, akatingisha kito hivi. I would see other ladies there sleeping, crying, you know. Uh, and I would talk to them, you don't need to cry because you, you are waiting to be taken to theater and your child is alive. Mine is dead and I can't even go to that theater. I felt it was my first time ever. I've never given up in my whole entire life. That is the moment I started feeling so uncomfortable. 
My childhood friends would call Shironi Koraz and Margaret are the one who would come and see me, try to talk to me, make sense to me. But still I would feel they are not understanding what I'm going through. Because even food I couldn't be able to eat. At this time, because of sleeping only on my back, I've developed bed sores. And I cannot go to, you know, to the wrong calls and all that. So they used to use pampas, you know. And that thing affected me. I was like, I was like, I was like, and I don't know how I'll survive from here. Who will him to me Catalia Quatumbo? So God, just do your will. Just do your will. May your will, God, be done, because this thing is too much for me. One day I waited. My mom came. I remember it was on a Thursday, on a Wednesday, and I removed the oxygen thing that was nilikuwa ni mewekwa ni kamambia mom. I don't want to continue with this life again. Mom didn't talk to me. She just cried and left. And that day, it is always good when someone is going through a situation, no matter what, let us not be very fast to judge. It's good to stand on the gap and pray. I remember a friend of mine, a pastor called Pastor Minor from UK, is the one who called. And I felt I have a bit of the energy. Now on Wednesday night, coming now to Thursday morning. And I answered the phone. And because the place I was, we were a few of us, and there were doctors and nurses, I just chose to put my phone on a loudspeaker. I told him I'm on oxygen. I've just removed to tell you thank you for calling and to tell you, to tell you goodbye because this and this happened. He's a man of God, he's a pastor. He asked me, when did all this happen? I told him, now this is, we are heading to that week. And right now it is on my fifth day, and we are getting to sixth one, and the baby is still not out. And I still have some remaining of the blood clot I cannot be operated on. He started speaking in tongues, he prayed, and he said amen, and I said amen. I waited for about 30 minutes. At this time, mugu yangu ya right, iye nye imechinjwa imefura, so imelalia mpakahi, so there is no even space. I don't even have an energy of how I can push the child. But God is so faithful, because I felt something pushing me. There is a doctor, the same doctor who told me to pray. Uh, he was coming now to the night routes zile za kuzunguka. Akiwa mebakisha just one patient afike penya niko is when I felt something pushing me. And I called the nurse, nikamambia, mimi nasikia kitu inanisukuma. But because migui mefura, to part the reg is so painful, I was in a place where it was on a corner. So hapo mwisho ni meza zilikuwa za kuekelea madawa. And uh, she came. Akaangalia kaniambia no it's the cavita that is reeking. Nikamwambia no it's not the cavita. But she covered me na kaenda. So when I saw the doctor is near nikamwambia daktari kuna kitu nasikia kinisukuma na ukutini. Kaniambia let me come and see Anne. So akakuja kaeka gloves and he checked akaona ni mtoto ameshatoka halfway. Miraculously kalitoka regardless kalikuwa deformed. Because now I'm all those days in the stomach, uh, kameoza, you know. But kakakua sasa kametoka halfway. Now the halfway is the one that is remaining, which I need to push. I remember he told me now, uh, where we are, the baby is almost coming out. I know you don't have the energy to push. But I want to remove this oxygen. I want to, you to take a deep breath. And then you try to push. I tried, I felt I can't. And I remember he picked the ribena that was just there. Iliko imeletwa too, and I rooted. Akachukua, akanipea. You know, it's not diluted, so it has a lot of sugar. So I felt uh, yuck. And at that time is when I felt the energy, like I want to vomit. 
and the baby came out. That, to me, I felt like I've been born again. I felt God has given me the freedom. The celebration that was there, the, the doctors were so happy that finally I am free. And I remember he told me with uh, my rag, with our Kikuyu rag, and he told me, Dokana tige gayoyo, never leave this God. Live to serve this God. That's how I survived from there. And I was taken out to the recovering ward with now my fracture and the medication now because they can't put the machine inside my stomach because because of the effect of the child being dead in the stomach all those days they had affected some of my organs so the easiest way was to inject me medications to remove now all that and that god uh, i stayed there for some times but now because this is my firstborn and i'm seeing other ladies with child with children it used to affect me a lot so the the one of the counselors came and he said the best thing is either to take me to a private ward where I won't be seeing those things or I'd be taken home because the main thing now has come out. Uh, we get a doctor who will be taking care of me from home or a nurse. And that is what my, my mom and my friends did. So I was taken home and uh, let me say it's good to have friends. Some connections, how they happen, it's miraculously. Because all that time that I was in the hospital, I had stayed without seeing my childhood friend for a very long time. But that is the time when I got to the hospital, now they came. And I remember one of them was nursing because she had just given birth. She had a young baby. And when I was taken home, she would come with her young baby when I, I would see that baby, I started feeling I have a lot of hope in me and I felt like it's my own baby. And that child would help me when I was lying on that bed to recover. She, she was not understanding every time she would come with that child, but for me, when I would see that child, I always felt like one day I'll hold mine, regardless that my own has gone. I kept on telling God that a day is coming when I hold my own baby. At this time, Siezi Jipeleka Cho, Siezi Jiosha. So she would come, Ananiosha, Ananipaka Mafta, Tunakana, Ananiongelesha, with my younger sister called Yvonne. They are the ones that were really taking care of me because now my, my own mother would have not taken me back and my husband had gone back to where he worked. So he was not within the country. So, and we needed him to be working so that at least he can be able to support me now that I need a lot of attention. So my best friend was the one, who's, well, the one that were taking care of me and now my mom and some of the few friends would come. They had a shade you to come take care of me. And make sure that I have everything that I need. My sister, one of <laughs> my baby sister, I remember that time that I got an accident. She was doing her final exam at KU, Kenyatta University. But she would make sure that she has done everything that I need and she has now to wait for my best friend to prepare and come so that they can exchange and my sister would go to school and do her exam and now my best friend will continue staying with me and they really supported me the doctor and the nurses kept on coming treating me we have been going to therapy luckily I did not expect to that my leg would be able to, I mean, I'll be able to step down with it. But I want to thank God even after being on a wheelchair for six months, then on working with a walking frame, something that you hold and you're training yourself to walk with it like this. And now that I'm on crutches regardless, 
to me it is a very great progress having that the doctor has said that I am recovering and one day they will remove even that uh, you know that that ile tuma inyo meka uko ndani na shukuru mungu and i'm expecting that a day will come where i'll be free from that pret i am walking i'm stepping down i'm only needing just a small support of the crutches that i am using it but i want to thank god that i'm alive today it hasn't been easy but i want to thank god that i had seen my head has come nilijiona nitaishi kiwete nilijiona nitaishi kwa kitanda but God has given me this victory and that is why I got the confidence to come on camera and share it here with people and tell people no matter what you're going through when God has not yet done with you don't give up on yourself even if people give up on you don't give up on God because God is the one who have our final say and he's the author and the finisher of our faith Today I'm here very strong. You know, you have seen me walking and standing very well. And I want to thank each and everyone who supported me. My own family, my mom, my siblings, Jane, John, Kuria, Yvonne, many other. I can't mention all. My big brother Nicholas. Thank you so much for for your support together with your family. Shiro you know you are my sister and you have really supported me a lot even coming to nurse my oods and all that Maggi and the rest and the whole team of giving hope to the hopeless movement I am here today because of your support guys thank you for your prayers thank you even for the different ministers who prayed for me and who supported me we are here to encourage each other we don't give these testimonies to boost we give these te- testimonies because when Jesus healed the person who was removed the demons he told that person go and tell your people that is what i'm doing here to tell you that you're watching that god has done it for me and if he has done it for me he can do it for you have faith in god keep on holding there just keep on trusting him Your miracle is on the way coming. Her childhood friend Shiro Nicholas shares how she witnessed her longtime friend Anne fighting through the healing process after the accident. Okay, first of all, hi everyone. Uh I take this opportunity to thank God. Uh I'm Shiro Nicholas, a friend to Anne. Uh tumelelewa pamoja, we come from the same village from our childhood. Uh, nimemwona akigro I'm a bit older kidogo too than her it was terrible if i may say it and um, when she went to she went to the hospital i was called and i was told that Anne got an accident she went to Nazareth but i was not able to go to Nazareth so when uh, the baby passed i was informed that she was taken to Kenyatta that's when i got uh, a chance to go to Kenyatta. When I went there and I found her, okay, she just hold me and she started crying. When I saw her, I just told God, God, this can't be because this is not the Anna I know. After all the suffering she has gone through from her childhood, still it's not enough. Still now she's still going through another one. She told me, Shiro me just let me go this is too much i can't take it but i told her and you know what there is god and there is a god of another chance i thank god because uh, she went through that process in the hospital and uh, when the baby came out she was taken back home where we started uh, nursing her at home it was too hard by then uh, i had a small baby my baby is almost turning 2 years By that time she was uh, I think 7 months if I'm not yeah 7 months. So I used to go with my baby to say hi to her and to check on her. I remember the first day we went 
she took my baby and she held her like this. she cried so i was like why are you crying she told me sure you can't understand but literally did i know that she was being taken through the healing process because she had lost her baby and now my baby is small she was expecting a girl and now my baby is a girl so she was taking her like her own i thank god because Maybe God knew this because my baby helped her a lot to heal through that healing process. That even she used to take her like I we could go like every day. She should tell me, just bring me my baby. I thank God when I see her like this. The journey has not been uh, easy, but through God's help and God's grace, she has gone from step to step. And right now, at least she can walk, though with crutches, we thank God. And we believe that God, even the rest, she will be healed totally. I am doing my work of giving hope to the whole press movement. Uh, this is a movement that uh, I am the founder of this movement. And specifically, it is out of what I've gone through personally. I can tell you this that I had very rich, very few people who came to encourage me. Some would just come to sympathize, but not encouraging, not giving me hope of living, or telling me, you know, you know, someone will come and tell you it shall be well, yes. Uh, but uh, there is that person who will come and tell you things shall be okay and take time to talk to you and explain in details. And so I felt there is a gap in... Uh, in our ministry or in the ministry or in the world that we are living in our society where we really don't rush to give people hope. We judge them, we misunderstand them. So God gave me a push or a calling of having a movement calling, called God, giving hope to the whole press movement. It is not all about, uh, it's not about Christianity only because we help different people. It is about helping people and giving someone a smile, helping someone who is crying, you know, and just giving that person a moment of smiling, a moment of feeling I am loved regardless of what I'm going through. And so that's what we do as giving hope to the oppressed movement. Uh, and not only that, during this time of COVID-19, regardless of my condition, we may not have finances, but I have partners who support me. I it know that I, would, I wouldn't say that we have the donors and all that, but I have people who is like you and me, my friends who know my story and what I've gone through. They're the ones that partner with me. There is some, something that they send to our accounts and we are able to get that. We have something that we can support no matter how retro. So we opted to be unique at this time of COVID-19 and we have been give, giving masks into different schools where we know that those kids are, cannot be able to afford. We are giving them masks. Uh, we are actually even restoring the smile of individuals who you would get some, they're affected by different situations of life. And of late, we have just finished giving a certain someone somewhere a home. I pray she can call her home to sleep. And uh, I would really want to ask people out there, outside there to support me. Uh, that may all, not the only thing. I have a book that I've written called The Faith at Kireth. And uh, this is actually the book. Uh, the Faith at Kireth, actually, when, when you get to you know, hear about the Faith at Kireth, someone, you can ask, huh, what is this that is called The Faith at Kireth? It is all about removing the veil of deception. Deception how? Deception in a way of, I would want to say, uh, a lot is happening in the teachings that we are getting, either as Christianity or as those people who are calling them the traditional this and you're being incited to fall something or invited to join a certain cult denomination and you told this is the right way to worship God. That's why that, that's what uh, this book is speaking about and more of where I was in, in the faith that I've been raised in. Uh, I've talked about it 
and to me personally how I take it I would want to say that I took it as there is a veil and I know I don't have it I don't believe going in the hospital is bad you know I don't believe taking medication is wrong I don't believe that worshiping God you know, there, there, there is a verse in the Bible that worship God with all instruments that are very loud, you know. And so today I believe in using those, you know, those items, those instruments to worship and praise Jesus. And so today there is a certain veil. I feel that it's no longer in me. And I am not the only one. There are so many people outside there going through the same thing. And I believe this book will help so many people. So it's good uh, that you get your own copy. Uh, we are not selling it to, or we are not, we, we are not just selling it for commercial issues. It's just to support the giving hope to the whole press movement. So when I wrote that book, I wrote that book so that at least it can support us even in our giving hope to the whole press movement. And that is not the only book. After going through all this, it is the pain that has made me to be the strong woman I, ha I am today. That's pain. So there is a book that is coming out called The Power of Pain. Anyway, you choose to use whatever it is you go through. You can turn it for your own good or you can choose to sympathize and get to a comfort zone and let it kill you. So me, I chose to be strong in that pain that I went through. And that is why now I'm working on the book called The Power of Pain. Thank you for watching today's episode of Testify. Join us again next week, same time for another moment of inspiration.